potato is a, is a complex carbohydrate because it has all those vitamins and minerals in it. But fruit. think of, fruit. fruit is also a complex carbohydrate. But think about this. Think about this. So a simple carbohydrate are things like um, added sugars, things like candy, syrup, high fructose corn syrup, you know, things that are so condensed sweet, you know, that that a lot of times the, the, um, the older that we get, our taste buds don't really like a lot of sweet things. So when we taste a simple carbohydrate, it's like, whoa, okay, that's a little bit too sweet for me. So those are, so that's the difference between simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. So when we talk about that one quarter of the plate, we are talking about complex carbohydrates. And just to refresh our memory, so, what are some examples of complex carbohydrates in your diet? Potatoes. Potatoes. What else? Corn would be a starchy vegetable. So the starchy vegetables are things like potatoes, um, corn, peas. So when we talk about the one quarter of the plate, we're talking about whole grain bread, uh, we're talking about brown rice, because what does brown rice have in it that white rice doesn't? Remember the the outside of it, the bran, oh, right? Bran. The, the bran, so fiber. So that brown rice has a, is rich in fiber, and fiber, as we know, slows down the absorption of the, the sugars and the fruit that you're eating. So it doesn't rush into the blood system and cause big spikes, okay? Because remember, um, and for those of you who weren't here in the last couple of classes, um, insulin, which dia people with diabetes um, have trouble uh, getting enough of, their pancreas doesn't make enough, um, insulin is the key to opening the cells in our body, all cells that use um, carbohydrates. So without that key to allow the, the glucose to end from the blood into the cell, without that key, where does the blood sugar go? it stays in the blood and wreaks all kinds of havoc, right? Um, and so that's what causes eye problems, uh, circulation problems, and things like that. So um, we really want to slow down that process of glucose entering the blood, the, the blood system, right? Okay, so when we talk about carbohydrates, they can be broken down. We talked about they can be broken down into simple and complex, um, but they can also be broken down into three main groups. We've got starches, we've got sugars, and we've got fiber. Okay, so those are the three fiber. Yeah, so those are the main three groups of carbohydrates, right? And we don't want to make it too complicated, but what we do want to talk about is which categories affect our blood sugar levels the most, right? So we can avoid those. Um, so when we talk about starch, we, we already talked about a few. These are things like whole grain pasta, um, ground rice, potatoes, things like that. So we, those things have those three other components that we talked about, vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and sometimes protein, that slow down the uh, digestion of those blood sugar, you know, the glucose. So those are the things that we want to eat 
when we're when we're filling up that one quarter portion of our thing. We, we want to fill it with the um, the starchy foods. The next um, main group of carbohydrates is sugar, and um, sugar can be broken down into three categories as well. And how many of you read the label? You know, whenever you're buying products, do you read the label for the sugar content? Okay, very good. So, when you're reading the label, do you look at the ingredient list? Yes. Yes. So, what, how can you tell by reading the ingredient list if a food is a sugar? Fructose. That word is a fructose. Yes. That and corn syrup. Yes. Um, yeah, sucrose. Yeah. Which one? Is it sucrose. Sucrose. So, what does sucrose and fructose, just the word, what does it have in common with each other? O S E. That's right. So, when you're reading the ingredient list, if you see anything that ends in O S E, that is a sugar. Okay, so, um, and then you'll also see added sugar on there as well. But <clears throat> when we're talking about sugar, we're talking about, you know, there's naturally occurring sugar. Like, what is the sugar that is naturally occurring in milk? Lactose, that's right. Lactose, also ending in OSE is the sugar that's just naturally found in milk. That's different, though. that's a different kind of sugar, right? Like, versus the, the fructose and the... It is, so, so sugars, um... I mean, like, it's a better kind of sugar than those. So those, are, those other ones are kind of like man-made, right? Kind of yes, so... It's like it's yes, so the, the three main, um, what are they called? There's monosaccharides. Mono sugars, dye sugars. So the simplest forms of sugar, and help me on this, Ashley. She's having a test on carbohydrates uh -huh. <laughs> this week. But um, I think they are glucose, galactose, and maltose. Okay? When you add two of those together, you get the disaccharides, we call them. Um, and those are things like fructose and lactose. Um, so they're still, they're, they're simple sugars, but they're naturally occurring. Um, you know, like they're in fruits. The, the sugar in fruits is called milk. What's the sugar called in fruit? Fructose, that's right. So fructose is naturally occurring, but again, like we talked about, most foods that have naturally occurring sugars also have the vitamins, minerals, protein, and fiber that can sort of monitor your, your blood glucose levels. Now, added sugar, added sugars really impact your blood sugar negatively. So these are these are usually man-made mm -hmm. sugars um, or a combination of highly processed sugar. Um, and they have a dramatic effect on your glucose levels, okay? Um, and these are the things that you want to look for. And on the, the label, the nutrition fact label, they will show up as under, under carbohydrates, they'll show up as added sugars. You want a very low amount of those, okay? So the, the lower, the better. Um, added sugars not only affect diabetics, they affect just, you know, people with seemingly, you know, great health, their pancreas runs smoothly. They still have an oxidative effect on the body, which means they float around, giving off all these free radicals, and the free radicals not only kill certain cells, they encourage the neighbor cells to kill all their neighbors. 
So, you know, eating foods that are low in added sugar is recommended for everybody. Okay, so pay close attention to that when you go shopping. And then we have something called sugar alcohol. Um, and sugar alcohols, they're a tricky one because some don't affect your blood sugar levels and some drastically do. So just like uh, sugar comes in the form of words with OSE, sugar alcohols end with O-L. O-L. Which one? Sorbitol. Yes. Sorbitol, xylitol. Those are all sugar alcohols and so these are man-made so why do they put them in our food so what, what what's the purpose of them they have to serve a purpose or they would be used usually um so you'll find them a lot in highly processed foods especially ice cream okay so what happens is when people when they use a sugar alcohol it lowers the amount of carbohydrate in in the food okay so you know people are thinking oh good you know i'm getting less sugar um less added sugar and so this must be a healthy thing well it can be but just like everything else sugar alcohols need to be eaten in moderation you know so be be on the lookout for that ol for that in the ingredient list and you will be amazed at how many processed foods have that in it. So you just have to be careful with it. Do they, do they count that in that attitude? Say that again? Do they count it on a label that attitude? Some labels have it, some so labels have it, and some don't. Aren't there things like the keto foods and because uh, they use engineered modified engineered sugars in keto, like if you're on a keto diet or is that what you're talking about, like those type of sugars? Yes. So, um, yes, they are probably sugar alcohols um, because they're they're modified so that they have less sugar, um, which is great for, for in general. But if you eat too much of them, they can cause severe digestive problems, so upset stomach. Uh, diarrhea, you know, the whole gamut, you know, the whole gamut. So just be very careful of those. Okay. And when you look at your food label and you see on like on this one it says total carbs 42, dietary fiber 6, would you have the 6 from the 42 and that's the actual amount of carbs in this or is that along the carbs? Yes. So say that again. Uh, I'm on your nutrition fact label here. Uh -huh. It says total carbs are 42, dietary fiber is 6. So I went way back when I was in school. And um, you would subtract the 6 from the 42 to find out what your total carbs in your meal was. And is that no longer a practice that people do? Because that's how I look at it. Yes. Total no, yeah. you're correct. So the total number of grams of carbohydrate is 42. Of that 42 grams, we've got six grams for dietary fiber, and then 13 grams of total sugars, which includes six grams of added sugars. Okay. And so for our recipe, what ingredient would be considered an added sugar. Honey? Honey? Yes, honey would be an added sugar. Even though it's a wonderful sweetener, it is considered an added sugar. Um, what would, we'll get to cocoa powder in a minute. We haven't talked about the fiber yet. So, <clears throat> what about non-nutritive sweeteners? No? Do you, do you like them? This, the, um, the, the like the pink bag, bag. <laughs> the blue bag. bag. The Arthur on the sweet Yeah, the Arthur on the sweet monk. Yes, monk fruit, right. Wow. All of those sweeteners. Um, 
the same is, is, is true for most foods, is eat in moderation. Um, so they're, they're a lot sweeter tasting than sugar, so you, ha you don't have to use as much. So a packet of, of sweet oil, let's say, um, you can use probably a quarter of it would be the equivalent of a packet of sugar, right? So, but, but some are more artificial than others. You know, we talk about the mom's food is supposed to be more natural. It is. It's supposed to be more natural. But when you get to uh, the pink and the blue, uh, yes. the blue uh, they're, they're more, more processed. Uh, they are. They are. And so if you are um, really trying to cut down on preservatives, which is a good idea, which is a good idea, you should stick to the naturally occurring, um, you know, low to non-nutritive speakers. Now, fiber. So fiber is critical. Hi there. Oh, I was <laughs> Fiber is critical. Um, and man, I think there might be a chair right over here. And I think there's an empty one right there. Oh, right here, right there. Yeah, welcome. Um, so fiber. No, uh, yeah. Fiber is another important thing, and you probably know a lot more, a lot more about fiber than you you do carbohydrates. So fiber is the part of the plant that, um, like we talked about in previous weeks, you've got you know the the, the cell basically the, the plant, and you've got this part is the outer part, like the, the husk or the bark or, or whatever, and the, the bran, and then when you open it, you have a tiny little piece um, called the germ, which has a lot of some, of the fat, some of the fat in it, which helps the plant grow, and then the rest of it is the endosperm, which is starch, okay? So like we talked about, when it's processed, they take all that bran off, so all that healthy fiber um, is gone, and um, sometimes they take the germ out and you just have starch. Okay, so that's why we really want you to focus on whole grain, brown rice, 100% whole, whole wheat bread or whole grain bread, because that fiber is going to help you maintain a good, good level of glucose. So we've got two types of fiber. Who knows what they are? Soluble and insoluble. Thank you, yes. So we've got soluble and we've got insoluble. Now soluble is what is the reason why we're using oats today. It is a it has soluble fiber, and all that means is that it um, it absorbs the water, yeah, and it forms a gel, right? And so internally, that gel forms along your um, digestive tract, and it builds a barrier for those carbohydrates to break through. So that's what slows down the um, spike in your, your blood glucose levels, okay? So soluble fiber is really important for, for everybody. Um, insoluble fiber is the part of um, is, is the part of the plant that goes completely undigested, and it adds weight to your stool, and it acts like nature's brew. So if you're constipated, or if you um, you know if you have um, colon cancer in your family, then you really want to focus on that. Insoluble fiber as well. Say that again about what it is. I didn't hear all of it. It seems like it's not. So, insoluble fiber is the part of the plant that goes through your body and is completely not digestible. Okay? So, it adds bulk to your stool um, and allows, it acts like nature's brew. It just cleans your colon, okay, and helps keep our um, colon regular. 
um, because when, whenever we're constipated, the waste, you know, there are free radicals in the waste as well, and they just wreak havoc on your colon the whole time it's sitting there. So we really want to make sure that we are regularly <coughs> taking in insoluble fiber as well. Okay. So, so what are some examples of Vegetables, non-starchy vegetables. So think about um, a green bean or a string bean. All of that stem, you know, all of a lot, the majority of the string bean is insoluble fiber, right? Um, celery, insoluble fiber. Um, so you're talking about, so I guess, um, you give us examples of that. Mm -hmm. So, of course, rubbish. So you need, like, you need green bean. Um, you mean, like, you know, she mentioned the that would be, like, insoluble, or, um, and then, like, a soluble would be, like, your definition. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, in, so soluble would be found in um, oats, avocado, um, beans. Um, and that's soluble. And that's soluble. Yeah, that's soluble. The insoluble is like what you said, roughage. It's things like. Um, you know, they're, they're usually very, you know, chewy, you know, they're, you have to chew them up. Um, coconut would be considered one, and that's one of our ingredients. Um, <clears throat> so the coconut adds a little bit of sweetness, and, um, lot, and, and I think it's one gram, one tablespoon has one gram of um, insoluble fiber which is what we need. So when we talk about fiber, how much per day are we talking about? So let's talk about that. So for women, we need about 20, minimum 20 to 25 grams per day, okay? Now, if we're eating a low fiber diet today, and then tomorrow we shoot for 20 grams. How do you think our digestive tract is going to react? <laughs> Not well, right? So we want to gradually increase to 20 to 24. Um, the other important thing is um, water intake. So you have to be hydrated in order for your colon to function well. And so if you're increasing your fiber intake but not increasing your water intake, you will have some digestive problems as well. Let me see, and I have to look up. For men, it is 30 to 38 grams of fiber per day. So for men, 30 to 38 grams of fiber per day. Okay, are y'all ready to get? Assembling. Okay. So we're not really cooking, we are assembling. Um, how many of you love to stay in the kitchen all day long, chopping, cleaning? Yes? Good. Okay. So how many of you have such busy lives that you don't have time to cook as much as you prefer? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people fall in that category now. Um, so this, this recipe, the German chocolate overnight oats, mm -hmm. is something that you can prepare the night before. So it eliminates a you know, morning rush hour, the rush hour meal, trying to get everything done. Um, it's quick, it's easy, and you just put it in the refrigerator overnight, and you are good to go in the morning. So let me put my gloves on. All of y'all have washed your hands. Let me put these on. And we're just going to talk about each ingredient because you can do whatever you want with overnight oats. You can add blueberries, strawberries, um, whatever you want. But 
when we're talking about the oatmeal, we really want you to, there's lots of oatmeals on the shelves, if any of y'all have noticed. Um, so we've got these old-fashioned flavor oats. These are, you know, the lowest in sugar, the lowest in sodium, and these are what are best for overnight oats, okay? The quick oats is going to be a little bit more sodium because that sodium coats the thing and it pulls in the, um, the water, but these are, these are what you want. Um, we also have a lot of oatmeals with added sugars, right? Like maple and brown sugar oatmeal. Um, it's better for you to have control over how much added sugar is in your oats um, than, uh, than relying on a manufacturer to put all of that sugar in there. So that's why, um, you know, preparing your own meals at home is, is so much healthier because you have control over that, you know? So the first step is adding our oatmeal to our oatmeal. And y'all are gonna be able to take these home and um, enjoy your oats tomorrow morning. Um, so we just add our oatmeal. And we're like that. And we're going to use this cup in just a few minutes to sample. Because I made some um, that I want you all to sample. Because you're, we're not going to be able to sample it today because it takes off. Okay. So for the oatmeal, you just want to make sure that you get just the old fashioned. <clears throat> the next thing that we're going to add is our chia seeds. How many of you have had chia seeds before? Yeah. So you know what happens is they start off small and then they expand when you add, you know, milk or a So we're going to add that. And these chia seeds are very rich in antioxidants, which are extremely important. Um, for many health outcomes. Um, oh, I your challenge, chia seeds. Okay, so for the oatmeal, it's half of a cup. So this is a little bit different than the <laughs> recipe that I gave you. So um, we're so the chia seeds are not included on on there, but it's it is one half of a tablespoon. One half of a teaspoon. Okay, and for chia seeds, because they absorb water and they get kind of squishy, what type of fiber is that? Because they absorb the water. Soluble. Soluble is what forms kind of a, like a gel. Um, the insoluble. Yeah, and, and let me just and let me just make sure. Um, I don't want to, to get it confusing, but every um, when we say it's soluble fiber, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have any insoluble fiber in it. It just means the majority of the fiber that's in it is soluble. So chia seeds also have insoluble fiber as well. Okay, and then we add our unsweetened coconut to the drink. Now, I'll wait, before you do that, wait on this, I'll try it. So like I said, this is my first time doing um, overnight oats, and the recipe is different than the cooking demo that I have. I would highly recommend for you to save these and put them on tomorrow morning. Okay, because that gives it a little bit of a crunch. So the sample that you're going to be ta taking home, I mean, the tasting today, um, will not have that crunch. But when you add these on top, it's probably better yeah. tasting. Did you toast these? Yes. Yeah. And toasting coconut mm -hmm. brings out so much sweetness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a small step, but big payoff. Did you, I mean, toast them yourself? From what? Yeah, from, from unsweetened coconut flakes. Flakes, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. but make sure they're unsweet. Yeah, you buy them like the women's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, and it takes, it happens very quickly. Um, next, we're going to add our pecans. And we know that, you know, nuts have protein, lots of minerals, lots of vitamins, and it gives it a little bit of a crunch as well. And then we're going to add our cocoa powder. Now, the important thing with the cocoa powder, so you always want to make sure that when you buy cocoa powder, it's unsweetened. There's a lot of them out there that are sweet. Um, so just make sure you, you get the sweetened version. And what, what is the health of cocoa? Oh my goodness. So cocoa coke, coke comes from um, a bee. And um, so you get the antioxidants from yeah. that bee. You get um, phytonutrients well, from that bee. Um, and a little bit of fiber. Let me see what my paper says. There is, believe it or not, there is two grams of fiber in that one tablespoon of cocoa powder. Yes. Wow, that's a lot. Two grams of fiber. Yes, ma'am. Can you give me some? Well, here, you can have mine. Yeah, you can have mine. Thank you. Thank you. And then, let's see what's next. Now, this is where I give you an option. Okay? So, you can add your milk now, or you can wait and add it tonight before you go to sleep. It's up to you, but I, I think it probably tastes better if you just wait until tonight to add it. So all you would do is add a half of a cup of milk and then um, top that off with your honey. You can add your honey now. So just okay. take your spoon and scoop it out and mix it in there. And again, this is our added sugar, but it has medicinal qualities. And it's going to be a little bit challenging to get it off that spoon. <laughs> so steel hooks, um, they they also don't fare well under um, the overnight oats um, because they're a little tougher and. Not as, as soft. The steel cut is a little bit higher in inside the fiber. Yeah. Steel cut, I, I think the purpose of the steel cut um, is to allow it to have a little bit more of that inside of the fiber, you know, um, than a regular oats. But the health benefits are the same. They're the same. So we've added our honey. And how many of you want to add the milk now? I could add. Anybody? You would? I don't know. I think Ashley said that um, it should be okay, okay as long as you consume it within 24 hours. Uh, okay. Because I have an option. I have like, uh, no. Oat milk? Yeah, oat milk would be wonderful with this. So, uh, let me ask you, raise your hand if you would like milk. Uh, I can do that one. Okay, two. Okay. Yeah. And tell me what type. We have regular um, low-fat milk or lactose-free milk? 
low fat? Would you like low fat milk or um, lactose free? A lady back there in the I don't have any almond But that would be wonderful. If, 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 if I I have to All right, so before you, when, when you add your meal, you're going to put your lid back on it. Oh my goodness, it's frozen. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I have the other you have your coffee, but you need to add anything else to your breakfast. Oh, no. So let me tell y'all how much fiber and how much protein you all have in that mason jar. I have to look it up. It's 10 grams of fiber. Wow. And how many grams of protein do you think? So what does this say? Well, because we added those few extra ingredients, like the chia seeds, um, that that takes it to 12 grams of protein. If you wanted to have even more, you could easily add peanut butter to it, and that boosts up the, um, the, the protein. So you can you can curate your own um, jars with whatever you like. Put some cut strawberries in there, blueberries, um, almonds with almond butter. That would be really good. Yes, yes, um, that would be a perfect addition. So you could put that in there like a this, and then when you have them, We've got 
oats, and of course brown rice, whole, whole wheat pasta. Sweet potatoes would be, yes, they, they are a complex carbohydrate, but they are, you know, a little bit more starchy. So we do have to, whenever we have a starchy vegetable, we have to really watch out how much we eat it. Because, you know, that starch is going to eventually turn into sugar. Um, but yes. And potatoes, meaning potatoes with the skin, sweet potatoes with the skin. Um, because once we take that skin off, we remove all of the, you know, societal fiber, which is, is something that we really want to increase in our diets. Yes? I heard something about peas. Yeah. Peas Yes. So peas, corn, and potatoes are considered starchy vegetables. So they can fall in two categories, or the, the potato can. The potato can either be considered a starchy vegetable or a complex carbohydrate. Um, so you can, you can refer to a potato as both of those. So when you talk about the peas, I know you said for the complex carbs, you have split peas, but then the starchy, you said peas. So yes. it looks like the green peas, the garden peas, but yeah, the green peas. <coughs> right. The split pea, um, you know when you when you soak the split pea it, it swells. Mm -hmm. um, the split pea is a little bit less starchy than the sugar pea. Right? Okay. Okay, so where would your fresh black eyed peas, green peas, purple hull peas, you know, where you pick them and shell them and they're fresh? So you don't have to soak them, you cook them. Yes. What so are those falling in? Those would fall into complex carbohydrates. So even though they're they're not really dry, they're fresh, they still yes. fall in them. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, they also have a good amount of protein. So for people that are trying to cut down on animal meats, um, legumes and beans are excellent. Excellent sweets. And in the in when I was, you know, learning about dietetics, um, the thought was that for for vegetarians you have to combine like beans with rice at the same meal, mm -hmm. and that's no longer true. As long as you have a combination um, of complementary proteins together in a day, you're fine. They'll form the amino, you know, form the amino acids together in the digestive tract as long as they're eating the same day. Any other questions? No. Well, thank you. I, this was a lot. <laughs>